Today, I'm taking you out back. I'm gonna show you how I turned this corner into the perfect chill spot. Here's what you can expect. I'll show you the steps I took to create large concrete pavers, which could be used for walkways or your patio space. I mapped this project out on paper first, so I had an idea on what I needed. When I pick up lumber and I don't use them that day, I tend to clamp them and let them sit until I get ready to use them. After I measured and marked the parts, I'll then use a circular saw to cut all the parts needed. I'll need to build three massive frame, which I'll be using as the form. I started building the frames with nails, but after I considered it, I switched over the screws later. Being that I'm working solo, I have to think of ways that I can work efficiently. Once I have the large frame built, I then create smaller frames inside that frame. The inner frames are measured at 46 by 46. Now I could make each of the frames separately, but this is where the efficient part come in. By using long 2x4s, this will make things faster, but also easier to keep the entire frame level. With the first frame completed, I made two more. I'll address this more in the next video, but in a nutshell, I picked the location and flattened it as much as I could. Since the yard is at a pitch, I had to do a decent amount of digging. Then I took the longest and straightest 2x4 that I had with a large level and checked the location just to make sure I was at least close enough. Now I'll bring out the frames and position them. I need to cut some stakes so I can hold the form in place. At this point, I have the frames in the exact position that I want them. Now I need to take the stakes and drive them in right up against the frames. There's a reason why I built the frame the way I did and hopefully this video would clarify that approach. Before I go on to level the form, I'm going to screw the frames together. Once I have the frames connected, I'll go around and attach the frames to the stakes. I think you'll need at least a four foot level. I level the outside frame first, then I work my way towards the middle. Now I'm gonna take some of the excess dirt around and put it back into the form. Only people are going to walk on top of these, so there's no need to make them the full thickness of a two x four. This way I get to save on the amount of concrete that I need. Now I'll need to compact these as much as possible. Now I have the inside built up, I'm gonna go one step further and use some leveling sand. I put about two bags per square to help achieve the thickness that I need. Then I gave it some more compacting. One thing I tried to do was make sure the edge was thicker than the middle. Overall, each slab should have a thickness of around two inches. Some boxes are a bit deeper than this, but typically I have around two inches between the level and the sand that I have here. That should be plenty of thickness for the concrete. I'm outside right now. It's about 7 a.m. in the morning and I uh, got a little bit of light. So I am going to try to get to work and get in front of the sun. So after bringing all the cement to the back, I'm going to have my mixing area here and then we're going to pour it over here. 
This is the first time I'm actually working with concrete mixer. And believe it or not, I've had this mixer for about four years now, and it's just been sitting in my shed. Time to put it to use. Let's go. So what we're gonna need here is a ton of concrete. Cut them open, throw them in here, use the right proportion of water, and let this thing mix. Then get it over into the forms. Yesterday was a really tough day and I calculated the amount of pounds I've moved. It was about 14,400 pounds from the pallets in the store to the cart, from the cart to my truck, from my truck to the garage, from the garage to the backyard. Whew. Let's go. Because I don't know much about this machine, I'm gonna start off with one bag, see how that works out. If it works out pretty good, I'll probably just do two at a time and we'll go from there. I should probably read the instructions on this, but come on, I have no idea what those things are. All right, so I have to put three quarts of water in here, so three and a half quarts per bag. We'll go with two bags. Let's say you want to take on a project like this. I wouldn't expect you to have a mixer. However, there are some other alternatives that you could look into. You can use a wheelbarrow or a mixing tub. Going this route is a bit more labor intense, but it's still possible. The other option is you can rent one of these mixing machine or purchase one, use it for all your concrete projects and sell it later. There are three tools that could have made things a bit easier for me, which I didn't have. One is a bull float, the other one is a placer, and a mag float could have been great. Nonetheless, I found a way to work around that regardless. I used the trowel to smooth the top over before moving on to the next slab. After about an hour or so, I'll come back to this and go over it one more time. The best thing about this project is I can work at my own pace. And that means if I want to do one slab a day, I certainly can. When I mixed this per instruction, I noticed the concrete was a bit dry. So I added an extra half quart of water per bag and this seemed to be a better mix. And for a project like this, I'm able to learn as I move from one slab to the next. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take this rake and just vibrate the corner. I didn't do this on the first pour, so I hope it came out nice. So all I want to do right here is make sure I get all these cavities and stuff filled in. And then once I'm done with this, um, I'm probably going to have some lines in it, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to go back to the first pour and we're going to add a smooth layer on top. It 
it's been about an hour's time since I've poured this first slab. I could probably wait a little longer, but I'm nearing a state where I can put a finish on here. After a day's work, I managed to get six of the nine slabs poured. I had a bit of a delay on this due to the multiple rainy days, but I was finally able to come out and start working on the next phase. So it's gonna be another rainy day. I'm gonna try to get out in front of that before it gets to pouring. I'm gonna take off as much of this form as possible and see if I can at least get one or two of these pads poured. The way I designed this is so that I have to pour this middle section last. I've taken the perimeter off and right now I release the middle section and I'm going to lift it up so I can release the screws to take these dividers off in the middle. And I'm going to leave this other piece in place, push the form back down and then I'll make my pour. There's probably an easier way to do this, but at the moment, this is the best I can come up with. So let's make it work. Well, just like I thought, I would get rained out on this project. I went on to pour the final pad and then it was time to remove all the lumber. All right, so we got this guy out of here. All right, so right now I'm just gonna repeat everything I just did. Remove all of the two by fours and just carefully do that so we don't chip any of the edge on the concrete. So I designed these specifically so I can get to these screws, pull this form off and do the same thing on the other side and then pop this middle piece out. So let's run the numbers. If you were to hire this job out, you'd be looking at $1,500 to $3,000. Here I did the entire project and I was able to keep the cost down. Not including tools, I spent right around $400 in materials. Oh yeah, and a whole lot of labor. I'm going to end the video here, but if you want to see what I do with this space next, stay tuned for the next part to this video where I complete this entire space and show you how I plan to use it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a like and drop a comment down below.